One of the things that I don't like in speaking is I think theology should always be a conversation. Mm. And so I actually like to look at people in the eye. You know, my favourite <laughs> way of teaching is with a small group of 15, sure. so we have a conversation. So it's kind of a big leap to go from 15 to 4,000 or, or however many there are with the lights in your eyes. And you yeah. can't, you know, there may be 4,000 people or there may be three, <laughs> as far as you're concerned, because you can't really see very many people. Um, so that's, it's, it's, it's hard work in the sense that you're then projecting to people that mm. you can't see. And I'd much rather feel like I could look at them. And, when, when you're on a stage, whether it be to, to a large or, or smaller gathering, are you teaching? Are you preaching? Uh, is there a difference between the two? Yes and no, I think. I mean, for me, one of the one of the things, if I can kind of come at it from mm. a slightly different angle, and um, one of the things that people often ask me is, is this session going to be academic or devotional? <laughs> okay. And I want to go, yes, it is. <laughs> um, because for me, one of the things that we're called to, and I think Paul is very clear about this, is as Christians, we're called to use our brains as well as everything else. Mm. And therefore, we need to mix academic and devotional. So when I'm on a stage like that, I am... Yes, I'm teaching, but I would be doing it in a preaching kind of way. Mm. The distinction I would draw is not so much between preaching and teaching, but between talking to a group of people you don't know and talking to a group of people you do know. Mm. I think preaching in the kind of classic preaching style is with a pastor that everybody knows, mm. or at least most people will know, yeah. um, talking to a congregation that he or she talks to yeah. every week, week in, week out. Mm. And then you have, it becomes much more contextual and yeah. you know, and you can say in our community, this is yes, happening yes. and I'm kind of relating sure. this. One of the things that's challenging for, you know, a big stage like that is I have no idea who most of the people are. So if you're trying to apply it, it becomes really tricky because actually half of the people won't understand what I'm trying to do when you're trying to apply it. So how do you apply things in a way that actually makes things mm. make sense for people? Yeah. You're, you're, as I say, speaking again this year. I think the theme of Spring Harvest this year is immeasurably more. Mm. What, what's the theme, and what are you going to be trying to develop in the course of what you're saying? Well, I'm on my home territory this year, mm. as opposed to last year, <laughs> because, um, as you know, I'm a biblical scholar and not a doctrine expert. Mm. So to be asked to do Bible readings on a doctrinal creed yeah. is um, terrifying <laughs> for a biblical scholar. I kind of go, "Where's the Bible passage?" But this time we've got a Bible passage, yeah. um, and it, it's Ephesians. Three, yeah. I think. Um, and so what is really good and exciting for me is actually w we get to um, really kind of chew over yeah. an amazing piece of mm. Ephesians. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to be looking at is actually how this um, short little um, section of verses from Ephesians mm. 3 actually introduces us to who God is, who Christ is, what God has done for us, mm. how we respond in worship, what a difference it makes to our yeah. lives, how yeah. it transforms us. It's an incredible passage. Yeah. Um, and we're going to get to savour it. You know, I'm um, <laughs> going to spring harvest for the first week when there's four days. Um, and so my first bit that I get to talk on is for this reason, we bow the knee. Yes. For 40 minutes, <laughs> I get to talk about that. Um, and to start with, I went, I can't do that. <laughs> Oddly enough, now I'm going, only 40 I haven't got minutes. any time, yeah. The, the, the classic problem, isn't yeah, it, with right. the, the enthusiastic preacher. Um, w when it comes, though, to when, you, when you're putting across stuff uh, and you're obviously drawing out the Bible and you've got a bit of time to, to contextualise mm. it and, and bring it to life, What's your hope when people leave? Is it that they'll know a bit more about the Bible? How, how do we make a Bible verse and knowing more about it transform the actual way we live our life and our relationship with God? Well, as far as I'm concerned, I've only ever succeeded if someone comes out of something that I've done rushing off to their Bible to mm. say, no, I need to have a look at that okay. and I need to compare it with this and yeah. I need to think about that. Um, I have failed utterly if someone comes out and says, I really enjoyed that and I know, now know everything I need to know about that <laughs> passage. For me, the whole point about what we're about is to become excited. And mm. what I, my great goal will be to get other people excited. Mm. And with ideally, to say we loved Ephesians 3 so much, now mm. go and let's read the whole passage. Mm. Let's see how it all fits together. Let's try and do what Paula did on Ephesians mm. 3 and the rest of Ephesians. Mm. That's what I hope for. Tune in to The Profile Interview in association with Christianity Magazine every Saturday at 4pm only on Premier Christian Radio where faith comes to life. <laughs>